To kick off the space party tonight, we are thrilled to introduce the one, the only, Dennis. You know and love him as Mindy and Guy's nosy neighbor on Wow in the World and the host of We Wow on the weekend. Without further ado, coming to you live from space, here's Dennis. Hello and welcome to the Wow in Space virtual event. Look at me, I'm in space. Actually, this helmet doesn't really look like a good helmet, does it? Um, I am your MC, Dennis. Uh, MC, what is, Anna? What does MC stand for? Oh, she doesn't know. I was asking my assistant, Anna. MC, uh, let's see, I could probably, Actually, if you put it in the chat, put it in the chat if you know what MC stands for. Um, I'm, you know what? I'm just gonna. I think MC, MC. Pro oh, you know what? MC stands for Mr. Cool. I bet. So I'm just gonna go with Mr. Cool. Okay, let me start over. <clears throat> Hello and welcome to the Wow in Space virtual event. I'm your Mr. Cool, Dennis. And today, we're celebrating the release of Wow in the World's new book, Wow in Space, a galactic guide to the universe and beyond, available everywhere starting tomorrow, December 5th. And in this book, you can zip through astronaut training school, apply for a job as a NASA astronaut, learn what it takes to be a star, and that's just the beginning. It's also jam-packed with eye-popping illustrations, jaw-dropping facts, jokes, quizzes, comics, and everything else that makes up our universe. Wow in Space is your one-stop shop for all things outer space. And in just a moment, I, Dennis, your Mr. Cool, will be interviewing the authors of this incredible book, the Mindy and the Guy Raz. But first, I want to give a special thanks to the team at RJ Julia Independent Booksellers for hosting this webinar. Uh, webinar? Hold on. What's a webinar? Anna? What's a webinar? Is this a webinar? Yeah, this is a webinar. Okay, this is a webinar. Let me know in the chat if you know what a webinar is. <clears throat> Thank you, RJ Julia, for the webinar. You can check out their store in person in Madison, Connecticut, or if you don't live near their store in Madison, Connecticut, you can purchase your copy of Wow in Space through their chat on or through their online store. The link is in the chat. And now let me introduce to you my guests for the show, my very best friends, the hosts of Wow in the World, Mindy and Guy Raz. Hello. Hi. Thanks, Dennis. Uh, yeah. Thanks, that yeah. intro was really long. Oh, good. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Well, hold, hold, be quiet. I want to sing a song to introduce you as the special guests. It's a segment. <clears throat> guest <laughs> segment. The segment with the guest. The guests come on the show, and just like the title suggests, we Dennis, bring them Dennis, out. Dennis, and then we... Dennis. 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 What? Sorry. What? Um. Can we? Talk no, about the song book. again? No, 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 no. no. We, we haven't come up with the song because the song, the lyrics don't really do anything. You just keep repeating the same thing over and over. It's just, oh, guess, right, you know, right, we know right. what a guest segment is. Yeah, maybe you've got some <laughs> yeah. questions for us. So, you know, sure, uh, sure, sure. Okay, well, let me first. Why what is Ooh. it? Oh, I guess we can get to that. Let's see. First, welcome to the webinar. Do you guys know what a webinar is? <sighs> Dennis, again. Never mind. Let me just say, you two look really great. Wow, really outer spacey. Super, super cool. That's fantastic. Thanks. Right. Thanks, Dennis. Okay, so <laughs> I have a couple of interview questions for you. Of some really big, hard-hitting questions everybody wants to know. <clears throat> so Please. you two have written a new book. And so I want to know, actually, we all want to know, uh, Mindy, this one's for you, this first one. What are books? What, what are books? Yeah, yeah, you know, like, like, what are they, you know? Uh, well, they are a collection of words that when uh -huh. put together, maybe tell a story or uh, explain something, and, and then they're bound 
between two covers uh -huh. on pages. It's a, it's a, you don't book. So is it like a magazine? No, it's a book. Oh, well, all right. Well, I think it's like a magazine. Guy Raz, what yes. kind of toothpaste do you use? What kind of toothpaste do I use? Well, what kind of, what kind of questions are these? The ones everyone wants to know. Is it minty? Is it cinnamony? Uh, does it taste like strawberry? I use a mint toothpaste uh, three times a day at least. I brush my teeth uh, as, as often as possible. Awesome. I'm going to write that down really quick. Guy uses mint. Um, Wonderful. Dennis. Dennis, you're doing it. You're doing a great job. Yes, Anna. But uh, we're gonna need you to talk a little bit more about the book. You oh, know, the, you know, the book! Yes, 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 yes. The book. I totally forgot about that. Okay. Um, let's see. This is the new book. Doesn't it look wonderful? And oh, you're, uh, you're coming in and out of your screen, Dennis. Oh, can they, everyone can't see it? Oh, it's because no, no it's lost in it. space. No, How do you get it to show up, Anna? How do you get it to show up? Just put it in front of you. Put it in front oh, there of we go. Shirt. Yeah. Thank you. So here we go. Doesn't it look good? You're cutting it off at the bottom. Oh, sorry. Doesn't it look really good? It, it is a pretty great cover, I got to say. It's both Guy Raz and I think our, our cartoon versions of us look just like us. Don't they, Guy Raz? They do. Yeah, I think they do, Mindy. Yeah. Well, this is just fantastic. I can't wait. So I say we read it. So uh, let me just see here. Wait, wait um, what? Where's uh, page one? It's really, you've got a lot of stuff. Okay, here it is, page oh one. Oh, uh, looks like there's a picture yeah. of Mindy and she's saying, oh, come inside. And then there's Guy Raz and he's like, we'll be your galactic guides. No, oh, Dennis, Dennis, I, Dennis. Huh. What? You tell him Guy Raz. I mean, I, I, may, I don't think we can read the whole book, Dennis. I mean, maybe just a, a page or two uh mindy what do you think yeah you, why don't we just read like a little section of the book dennis because oh. we're getting this book tomorrow so they'll be able to sure, read sure, the sure, 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 sure. You know yeah i was gonna say that? it's really long there's like a lot of pages in here yeah it would take a long time to read the whole book I, I got an idea why don't we read the section of the book that talks about the moon the moon that's a yeah, great one mindy yeah ripped it a little bit like wow in the world so uh guy Raz, you can play the role of guy Raz, and okay. i'll play the role of mindy and dennis you can play the role of the moon perfect oh i want to be guy Raz. let me play guy Raz. no you uh, can't well, be guy Raz because guy Raz is guy Raz. Uh, you, yeah, can you can be the moon be the moon it's this page. Page. okay well is the moon the star no like is moon, he the star of the show the moon but like a star here on earth it's got the most lines uh, <laughs> so it is the star you wonderful the i'll be the moon okay so dennis right. is everyone uh, ready we all have our ready. place we all in the right, place, ready. In the right spot. yep ready okay so without further ado we're gonna read this part of the book about the moon starring me the star of the show the moon Whenever you're ready, Dennis. And here we go. Action. Good night. Stop! You scared me. The moon? Where'd you come from? Well, some astronomers think that I was formed when another planet crashed into Earth, and that I'm just a mix of all the broken pieces from the collision smashed together. But nobody knows for sure. It happened a long time ago. To be exactish, 4.5 billion years wow moon that's quite the origin story i hope i get to walk all over you someday mindy it's perfectly all right i've been walked on by 12 different astronauts in fact i'm the only place beyond earth where humans have ever set foot and i've still got the footprints to prove it fascinating uh, tell us more about yourself moon well, I'm about one quarter the size of Earth. Uh-huh. And I'm also pretty low on gravity. So on me, you can jump about six times higher than you can on Earth. That's amazing. 
And my gravitational pull is mostly responsible for Earth's ocean tides. What? You do this whole time? Moon. <laughs> Guilty as charged. You little stinker, Moon. And do you want to know a little secret? Yes. I'm slowly moving away from Earth. What? Don't worry. It's less than an inch and a half a year. I'm moving about as slowly as your fingernails grow. Guy Roz, get my lasso. Uh... Relax, Mindy. I'm not going anywhere. Earth and I are totally in sync in our rotations. It's just my job to keep Earth from wobbling around on its axis too much. Well, uh, it's been nice chatting with you, uh, Moon. <laughs> Good night. Good night. And scene. Great wow, job. Are they Dennis. clapping? Yeah. Good job. Yes, everyone's Anna, clapping. Are they clapping in the chat? Yeah. They're clapping in the chat. Well, this was really great. What else is in this book? Do we know? Yeah. Is there other stuff in here? Oh yeah, there's lots in this book. Um, let's see, let's see. What should we talk about first? There's, um, well, uh, do, you, do you have what it takes to be an astronaut? Like a little- What? Like a quiz. Oh, so it is like a magazine. No, no, no. Do you want, do you have what it takes to be an astronaut is a little bit more like uh, the job application that you would get if you were to apply for an astronaut job at NASA. You know, yeah, um, yeah. questions from this, Dennis, uh, to see if you have what it takes to be an astronaut. Um, mm -hmm. You have a master's degree in any of the following fields. Just say yes or no. Uh, biological science? Uh -uh. Computer science? Uh, no. Physical science. I don't know what that is. Engineering? <gasps> no. No? Nah? No. No. Oh. Yeah. Okay. So this isn't. Uh -huh. This isn't looking. So can well. I be an astronaut then? Uh. Um, well, let me ask you. A... How right. much math do I have to know? It's a lot of math. It's oh, a lot of math. Okay. And. And all the kids listening right now, if you're ever wondering, well, why am I taking all these math classes? Why do I have to learn all this math? If you want to be an astronaut someday, math is a big part about a part of being an astronaut. Yeah. Oh, I'm gonna go do math. No, not right now. Not right now. Oh, not right now. We're in the middle of we're in the middle of this event right now. Right, 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 right. After we'll do math. Sounds like a sounds like a plan. Um, so what else we, should, should we talk about another part of the book? Yeah. How about we talk, we have a whole section in there on what happens to your Ooh, body yes. when you're in space. Yes, it is absolutely amazing. Dennis, when you're in space, your body has a temporary growth spurt. What? Yeah. So when you're here on earth, your spinal column is sort of compressed, all of those bones. But when you go into outer space, there's no gravity or there's very little gravity. So they all kind of spread out and it can make you up to two inches taller in space. Oh, but, two inches. but, and this is a big but, when you land back on Earth, gravity takes hold and you lose those two extra inches. You go back yeah. to your normal place. Yeah. And, wow. Yeah. Did you know, Dennis, that when you're in space, you feel like you have to pee all the time? <gasps> Ew! It's true, Dennis. So uh, you're, when you're in space, your bodily fluids inside your body start to kind of pool or collect in certain areas, which uh -huh. tricks your body into thinking that it's carrying too much water and your body responds by making more pee. Ah! And did you know that when you're in space, you don't just sit on a toilet willy nilly. You got to be strapped into that thing, or you're gonna flow away in the middle of doing your business. What? It's true. Actually, you know what? That's how I go at home too. You wear a seatbelt on the toilet? Yeah. Huh. So it's for safety. So it's one way, I guess. Um, well, well, I am like an uh, astronaut, kind of. <laughs> well, um, uh, why don't why don't we move on? Uh, did you know that in space? Your vision uh, becomes a little weird. 
What? Oh yeah. Yeah. So in space without gravity, once again, your fluids kind of float up, up, up to your head, causing your head and your face to get kind of all puffy. And sometimes that pressure and that puffiness causes your eyeballs to kind of distort a little bit. It gives, makes your vision all wonky. Wow. That's amazing. Are there other things in this book? Oh yeah. We have a whole section about space pranks, pranks uh, aboard the International Space Station? Really? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. So in 2017, this astronaut named Peggy Whitson, she came up with this crazy bonker balls plan to prank her Russian crewmates. So what she did was get two of her NASA crewmates to zip her up in a cargo bag and yeah. then Float her over to the Russian section of the International Space Station, and she jumped out of the bag and surprised everyone. Wow! There's this other story where these two twin brother astronauts, do you know their names, Skyroz? Mark Kelly and Scott and Kelly? And Scott Kelly, yeah. Tell them what Scott Kelly did. Well, Scott Kelly, he was his twin brother, uh, was in space, Mark Kelly, and Scott sent Mark a gorilla spacesuit to the International Space Station. And what, a he, whole gorilla spacesuit? A whole gorilla, a gorilla suit. Oh, and just a gorilla it, suit. A gorilla well, suit. It's in space today, I guess it's a space he, suit. He didn't send so, a gorilla in space, he sent the suit. A gorilla oh, so suit. suit. Okay. And, and, and Mark put the gorilla suit, um, uh, Scott actually put the gorilla suit on, and uh, and he jumped out and surprised the other astronauts on the on the International Space Station. They, for a moment, thought there was a gorilla on there, a space now, gorilla, I, oh, a, a space gorilla. Uh, just it's still just a gorilla. It's just, just a gorilla. Oh it's right, not a, a human gorilla. in a gorilla suit. But I should mention that you know sometimes these astronauts aboard the International Space Station they're up there for a while. In fact, Scott Kelly was up there for a whole year, so he. Had Get a little bored. He needed something to pass the time. So he and his brother down on Earth concocted some space pranks. Wow. Yeah. A whole section here on space pranks. And um, let's see, what else do we have in here, guys? Animals. We have animals in space, Mindy. Oh, yeah. Animals. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. There are animals in space? Yes. Well, yeah. So the we had, um, let's see, the, the, uh, Oh, fruit flies? Fruit flies went to space 14 years before any humans did. And the reason they sent fruit flies to space is because they wanted to see the way their bodies reacted in space. It turns out that fruit flies and human share over 60% of the same DNA. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Did you know, Dennis, that the first ape in space was named Ham the Chimpanzee? He went into space on January 31st, 1961, 61, three months before Yuri Gagarin, who was the first human in space, and even four months before Alan Shepard, who was the first American in space. And his name was Ham? Ham. That was his name. Wow. Like the food or like the radio? Uh, <laughs> maybe more like Probably the radio. Probably the radio. Probably yeah. the radio. Um, and then there was tortoise A and tortoise B, the first animals to ever orbit the moon. Turtles? Turtles. Huh? Yeah. Oh, Guy Raz, tell them about the, the flatworms. Oh, yeah. The flatworms on space, Mindy? Yeah. Ooh, no. Did you know? Can I tell them? Can I tell them? Please. Or do you want to tell them? You can tell them. Okay. In 2015, researchers sent a group of flatworms to the International Space Station to see how they would do after five weeks in space. And do you know what they found, Dennis? What? Well, not only did some of these flatworms spontaneously divide into two, but in one case, the two halves each grew back two heads. What? Head on the top, yeah. and head on the bottom. Wow. Oh bonker balls on these flatworms. So lots That's of animals. incredible. Dogs have been to space. Uh, cats have been to space. Hamsters have been to space. Hamsters. Lizards, fish. Cockroaches. Wow. That's so many animals in space. Actually, you guys, hold on one minute. I'm getting interrupted here from Anna. 
Anna, my assistant, has to uh, break in here. Anna, what is it? So there are so many questions in the chat, Dennis. Oh, Maybe questions. Maybe it would be a good idea to ask some of the kid questions now. From kids? Yeah, from kids. OK, Anna's saying there's kid questions from kids. I guess they're just regular questions from kids, but not kid questions. Do you guys want to, should we go over some, you want to, um, I want to read you some questions from some of the kids in the audience. Sure. Yeah, yeah okay. that'd be great. Let me find them. Hold on one second. Let me just see here. Um, let's see. Okay, this is a good one. Mindy, how is Grandma G-Force's diaper house? Oh, how is it? Oh, how's it doing? How is Grandma G-Force's diaper house doing? Okay, well, um, as you might have remembered from our episode, A Diaper Home for G-Force, um, the house didn't quite make it to the end of the episode because we did not let the diaper bricks dry all the way. Uh, I was impatient and the house collapsed. So it is being rebuilt, but I'm happy to say that she has uh, patched things up with her cat landlord, Colonel Toots Thunderpaw, and she is back living with him happy-ish for the time being. Diaper oh, house is Yes. Okay. Thanks for asking. Oh, you're welcome. Uh, yes, that was from Harper. Thank you, Harper. Okay, now I've got Harper? a space question for both of you, okay? This one says, if you had a chance, would you ever go to space? Guy Raz, you want to take it first? Well, uh, as our loyal listeners know, uh, we uh, we've spent a little bit of time up there. Uh, but if I had the chance to do it, uh, you know, the traditional way, oh, no question about it, I would jump at the opportunity. Guy Raz, you would you... go to space. What? Yeah. Really? Well, Maybe, you know, the you traditional. Space? Uh, I would go to space, um, but I, I, um, I think I'm a little too scared to go to space in real life. Why? Is it the heights? No, it's like that. I think that being on a space shuttle, I think it's the claustrophobia. Have you seen astronauts in the, the in the shuttles? They're just kind of crunched up in there. And I, I think I oh. would be a little afraid. I would like to be in space but I'm going to wait until I can be teleported there. I don't want to be scrunched up with a little leg room trying to make it there on my own. I, that's, I, I don't want to travel to space. I just want to be in space. I know mean, there's not imagine, much room could, in space. What? There's not much space in space. Is that what well, you're there's saying? There's plenty of space in uh, space. space. Mindy, but, but imagine how much space ice cream you could eat. I mean, you could have a whole space ice cream truck. That, that is true. That is true. Um, space food is really interesting. Do you know, speaking of space ice cream, that you cannot eat um, like crackers in space? Really? Yeah. Be and can anyone guess why? Dennis, can you guess why? Because um, the there's no cheese. Is it? No. No, no, no. There's no cheese in space. Cheese to space and probably come in like maybe a tube or something, but you can't be chewing crackers or bread or anything with crumbs in space because they get in the bed. What? They what? get in the bed. Crum crum no crumbs in the bed in space. No, it's not that they get in the bed, Dennis. It's that there's you know very little gravity, so the crumbs would Fa they. They would explode, explode. The crumbs would explode? The crumbs would get everywhere, Dennis. Oh. It would get in the astronauts' eyes. It would get into the control systems. It would really I... cause big problems. Although okay, well, can they just vacuum it up? I heard there was a lot of vacuum in space. Don't they have a big vacuum up there? It's a different kind of vacuum. That's, a, oh. that's, that's not the same kind of vacuum. All right. Well, let's see. Do you guys want another question? Yeah. Please. Okay. This one is, actually, I don't know who it's for, but it says, where is Reggie the bird and Granny G-Force and where is baby Dennis? Oh, please. Where please, are they? Please do not well, bring baby. Baby Dennis, that one might be for you, for you Dennis, uh, I think. Oh, well, baby Dennis is not allowed on webinars. He's too little. Listen, 
we're here. So someone's got to babysit everyone else in the neighborhood. Let's just be honest here. We can't leave grandma G force Thomas fingerling and baby Dennis unattended. So Reggie, we paid him 20 bucks and he's watching to make sure that things are calm and controlled in the neighborhood because we're here. That's on so the true. Yes. Reggie yeah. is very responsible. He is. Okay. Here's one for both of you. One out of it, yes. Oh, sorry. Okay. Here's a question for both of you. Are you going to write another book after this one? Maybe. Is this a secret? It's a secret. <laughs> uh, let's just say the next book may or may not involve some rather large animals. Gorillas. That are no longer walking the earth with us. They oh. peaked out a while ago. Yeah, what would that be? Yeah, it's definitely gorillas. Okay, this one's yeah. for, actually this one's for both of you too. Okay, what's your favorite planet? Mm. My favorite planet, I could say, the one that we're living on right now. The moon? No, no, we're not on the moon. We're on planet Earth. What planet are you on, Dennis? Oh, right. Sorry, I got confused because of the thing we did before with the moon. Oh, oh that's true. I no, I I think and, and the moon is not it's not a planet, but I think that the Earth is my favorite planet. I mean, look hmm. at this planet. We gotta take good care of it. It's got beaches and it's got oceans and it's got mountains and it's got people and we can breathe all of this fresh air. I think the earth is my favorite planet. What about you, Guy Raz? I would have to agree with Mindy. The earth is my favorite planet. But if I were to choose a non-earth planet, I really like Saturn. You know, have you, I think we've all seen Saturn through a telescope. Sometimes you can see it with your naked eye. And it is an absolutely beautiful sight to see through a telescope. And those images that we've, we've received of Saturn from some of the high-powered satellite telescopes are unbelievable. The colors and the grace of that planet. I just love it. It's so inspiring. Wow. Do you guys know what planets you have behind you? Well, I'm here on Jupiter. You're on Jupiter? In this one, I think I think you know which one this is, Dennis, right? Um, let's see. It looks red. There was a rover on it once. That... Oh, planet rover! Oh, that's, that's a great not a planet. planet. Oh, no, no, it was a it was a rover that 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 traveled on it and took photos. Oh, rover like a, a dog. Maybe we rover? hope to send humans there. Yeah, remember? You know, we want to try to figure out a way to get a human there. Maybe use the moon as a launching pad. It's not the moon. You already no, said no. we're not on the moon. And the moon is not a planet. Oh, okay. It so, starts with an M. Starts with an M. M. And ends with an S. Moon. No. The letters. No, it's not. The moon is not a planet, Dennis. The I'm moon sorry. Is not a Stop guessing I got the moon. confused because of the M. Uh, Mars. Mars. It's Mars. That's it. Mars That's is real. It. I thought it was just That's a movie. It. What? Yeah. yeah. Is real. It's, it's wow. real. Oh, boy. Well, and my planet is very contentious. I'm on Pluto. Okay. So you guys know about that one, right? Yeah. It's yeah. like a whole big controversy about Pluto. Yeah. You know, it's so whole funny to me that, that Pluto was demoted to a dwarf planet. How many years ago now, Guy Raz? Before oh, our listeners about, were 12, even born. Yeah, I think about 10 years, 12 years ago, maybe. Yeah. Oh, really? They and don't even know about Pluto, maybe? Th that's the thing. Everyone knows about Pluto. Even if you weren't born when Pluto was considered one of the you know major planets in our solar system, I feel like everyone we talk to still says Pluto is their favorite. Everyone's still rooting for Pluto. I mean, I'm rooting for Pluto. It's a good planet, good dwarf planet. Yep. All right, let's see. Let's get another question here. Um, 
Let's see. No, no, I don't want to do that one. No. Oh, here's a good one. Okay. What was one of your favorite facts that you learned about space while writing this book? Boy, we have gone all over a lot of them. Yeah. Do you have any left that well, was your I, favorite? I can, I can start. My favorite fact about outer space is that we've learned so much about it in just the past 20 years. I mean, just 20 years ago, we didn't really know about exoplanets. We didn't really know how many existed. And now today, with all of this incredible technology we have and the satellites we have, we know that there are maybe 400 billion, maybe more planets in our own galaxy, the Milky Way galaxy. Our planet Earth could be just one of 400 billion planets. And when you think of that, it's just mind boggling to imagine what's out there and how cool it could be if one day we could figure out how to visit some of those planets. Wow. And my favorite fact is that there are bags of poop on the moon and it's perfectly preserved because there's no atmosphere. Wow, that's disgusting. Let's move on to the next question. Oh boy, I don't know if either one of you would know this, but would grandma G-Force feel a lot of G-Force if she went into space? Um, grandma G-Force would be the G-Force in that's space. True. She does it wherever she goes. Yes, ah, certainly on very lift technical. Up. On a lift You've never been around Grandma G Force. She is a gravitational force. She's a force she of gravity and nature too. Let's see. I'm going to see if I can find one that's not about space. Just to just to like cleanse the palate. Um, oh, there's one. Mindy, do you have any plans for your gingerbread house for the holidays? Oh, yeah. See, for the holidays, um, I, I just kind of go minimalist. So I, um, you know, uh, just kind of go with um, breath mints. I get rid of all of the gumdrops. I get rid of all the candy canes. And I just do like a little minimal thing just for the oh, holidays. Because like, cause your, your house kind of looks like Christmas all year long. It does look like the holidays all year long. Yeah. So when the holidays come around, I got to make it stand out in the neighborhood. So I take everything down and make right. it super duper boring. All right. That makes fact, sense. There's only one story right now and it has no roof. What? There's no roof? Not not yet. I I did this instead of building the roof. I I was I uh. wanted to be here. I maybe after this, I'm going to go and build the roof. And Guy Raz said he would help me. Right, Guy Raz? Uh, I, I did? Yeah. No. Oh, okay. Yeah. Do you remember I said I would help rebuild your micro house after we turned it into an aquarium? After and you turned it into an aquarium? Well, we did, we, I did do that. Um, in that episode we did called Octopus Punch, uh, where Grandma G-Force and Thomas Fingerling were trying to recreate, um, what the researchers learned about octopuses uh sharing too close of a space how they would actually like punch each other and th and throw uh silt at each other from the ocean floor but uh so we decided to turn guy Raz's micro house into an aquarium to surprise him not a surprise my poor micro house <laughs> it was not it was not the reaction we thought we were going to get from guy Raz by turning his house into an aquarium. So I said, I will help you to rebuild it because eventually the water pressure got too strong. It broke all four walls off the house and we had to rebuild it. But we I did, yeah, you helped Dennis, right? Mm -hmm. By help, I mean, you caused it to collapse again and then we had to start all over, but we Bye. eventually got it all done and you said that you would help me to rebuild my gingerbread mansion the next time the roof caved in, caved in and you haven't done that yet, Guy Raz. Well, uh, yes. so maybe after this. Uh, if I made the if I made the commitment, I'll I'll do it, Mindy. I just okay. Ugh. You know, what I was just it's thinking. It's gonna be so much fun. It's gonna be so much fun. We're gonna make frosting. What? I was thinking how well, you Dennis, said earlier that space shuttles and stuff, they don't have much room, that maybe Guy Raz would make a good astronaut because his house doesn't have much room. 
That's a good actually. Point. Could we turn the micro house into a space shuttle? That's hey, there uh, was we micro house yeah. into a rocket. It's, it's fixed it's into the really ground. I don't it? know if that's a good idea, Mindy. Really, it's so small. It's so crammed in there. All we need to do is put like a, a nozzle on the front. We need uh, maybe about some that. some fins on the back. I think, uh, I, I think maybe we should talk about this. Uh, I, no, no. Okay, let's surprised. see. You guys want another question? We'll do it when you're sleeping. Okay. okay, let's see. Oh, oh, this one's uh, maybe you know this one, Mindy. What kind of gas does the motor pickle run on? Does it Are run on sure gas? Are you sure you want to know the answer to that? Oh, Are you I sure mean, you I, know? Okay. I don't know. So as you may have now heard, uh, Thomas Fingerling is a bit lactose intolerant. What? So I bottle it up and I put it in my motor pickle. And that's how it runs. And also, that's why it sounds the way it does. Mindy. Yeah? Ew. Okay, let's see. I've got a, oh, I've got a question here for me. Let's see, it says, Dennis, why don't you look like a bird? What? Why don't I look like a bird? Like Reggie? They're just, they've got me confused with Reggie. Reggie looks like a bird. I look like Dennis. You know what, though, Dennis, hmm. I just realized something. When kids are listening to the podcast, they can't see you or me or Reggie or anyone else. So we could look what like whatever we do in their imagination. That's Wait, true. They can't see us. No, no, they can't see us. No, it's 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 it's, it's just a podcast. Well, that can't be right. Well, unless you have that, aphantasia, sure. which was another wow in the world episode where, you know, the aphantasia, that condition where your mind is blind, unless you have that, you are imagining what anyone on our podcast looked like, looks like, and whoever asked that question, who was it that asked that question? That was asked by Craig. Craig. Craig thinks you sound like a bird on the podcast. He was imagining you as a bird. And what he's trying to say is he's disappointed a bit to find out that you are a human, but you do have birds on your shirt. That's true. Oh, that's true. Maybe that's what he was thinking. Rubber duckies. Yeah. Yeah. So I kind of look like a bird. Y yes. Sure. You look okay, like a bird. Let's see. Let's find another space question. Uh, let's ask this one. How long did it take you both to write this book? Oh, sorry. How long did it both take you both to write this books? How long How did it take you to write this books? this books? Well, we've been writing books now for a few years. We have uh, Wow in the World, The Human Body. And then we have uh, Wow in the Wild, yes. Wow in Space, maybe two another ones, one. What's in a Wow? Our she fact well. book. You guys have written all these books. Yeah. So, uh, and I would say, it's hard to say how long it's taken to write each one. We're always kind of working on a lot of things at the same time. Yeah, these have a lot of pages in them. I imagine it takes a long time, right? Yeah, a lot of facts. It takes a long time, a long time and, uh, but there are lots of, but you know what? It takes as long to write it as it does to wait for it to come back. So mm -hmm. when you write a book, you have to be very, very patient because I think we wrote this book, I don't know, how long ago, Guy Raz? A year ago? More than a year ago, yeah. And then it's got to be illustrated and then it's got to be printed and then it's got to come on a cargo ship from wherever it's printed halfway around the world. And we have to be very patient when you write a book. Very but it's patient. here and it comes, it lands on earth tomorrow. Tomorrow. Wow. Oh in space tomorrow tomorrow that's so exciting you guys want to do one more question sure. okay. okay we're just going to end with one more question this one's a classic question it is for both of you and it is what is your favorite episode of wow in the world 
Okay. You want to take it first, Guy Raz? Sure. I, my favorite episode is probably one that's not out yet, but I loved an episode a couple of weeks ago where Dennis and, and of course, Reggie pretended like they were me and Mindy and they went on an incredible adventure in a supersonic jet. And it was kind of crazy because I didn't believe that Dennis really did it. But then I heard the episode and I realized he really did it. They really flew in that in that supersonic jet. Guy Raz, you liked the episode I was in? Yeah, I did. I loved it. Oh, I'm honored. Oh, goodness. And Dennis, I too would say that we've got some really, really fun and funny and informative, interesting episodes coming out uh, in just a few months that we are working on that we can't tell you about yet. Some of those are going to be my new favorites, but I would new say- New episodes? I think my favorite episode uh -huh. is the rise and fall of Static Man. <gasps> Static Man. No one will ever know who Static Man is. What a no mystery. Ever know who can Static Man be? But no I think one. Next time we do one of these, we'll have him moderate. We'll have him do the interview. That's a great oh, idea. Oh, that's a great idea. I bet Static Man would be a wonderful interviewer. Very handsome, that Static Man. Yes, he oh, is. I very, know. very. Very good. Well, thank you so much, Mindy Thomas, Guy Raz, and Dennis. Thank you for telling us all about this new book. And remember, those who are watching, you can purchase your copy of Wow in the World, Wow in Space. You see the links there in front of you. Thanks so much for joining RJ Julia tonight. And thank you again, Mindy Thomas, Guy Raz, and Dennis. Thank you so much. Everyone take care and thank you for joining us. Bye now. Bye. Thanks. Hi. Um, here we go. go. Oh, fun.